Well, hey everyone, this is Bob from Hot Rock Central, and in today's video, I'm going to go through how much solar panels do you really need? Well, as you can see here, I've got solar panels scattered all over the place here, 69 of them in all. Each one of them is 300 watts or better uh, for a grand total of about uh, 22 and a half kilowatts. Now, uh, for most days, this is this is like really overkill and it's more than I actually need. But on overcast days, especially if they stay that way all day long, like we're kind of having here, we got a little bit of sun poking through, but not much, but uh, it's, it's pretty much overcast. But the last overcast day I had here, it was solid overcast all day long with light rain uh, and drizzle. And my entire output for the day was 15 kilowatts. Now compare that to uh, if a full sunny day, I've got a potential here of 220 kilowatts for, for a full day. So that's quite a bit of difference. And uh, right now at this time of the year, it's mild. I'm not using any air conditioning or heating. So uh, 15 kilowatts was enough to maintain my static load, which is uh, about 500 watts this time of year. And overnight, I used about 400 amps off my battery bank. And that was enough by the end of the day to completely charge up my battery bank. So uh, uh, 400 amps uh, on a 24-volt system is 10 kilowatts. So that's 15 kilowatts and 15 kilowatts in all. So I stayed pretty much even Steven on that particular day. But here shortly, it'll be getting cooler and colder because we're, we're coming up on winter. And so what I decided to do, and this isn't going to help out a whole terrible lot, but I'm going to add some more panels to my system. I'm going to add nine of them to uh, the front of these here. And to save some money on wiring, what I'm going to end up doing is wiring these panels into my existing panels. And I'll give you the reason for that. Is First of all, it's the money. Uh, this uh, number 10 stranded wire is uh, getting pretty expensive and uh, for me to take a separate run of wires from the new panels over to the shed there it's 80, 80 foot uh, back and forth and there's uh, six wires off of three strings so that's a 500 foot roll of wire and nowadays if you go over to Lowe's uh, this stuff here is almost 200 bucks if it's not there already so uh, <clears throat> uh, on eBay, you can uh, you can find some good deals every now and then. Uh, I've actually got rolls of wires for as little as a hundred dollars, and I think the last one I got was one hundred twenty-five dollars. So you can save a little bit of money if if you need some of that kind of wire, and you want to wait for it. But uh, anyways, what I decided to do was uh, since these nine panels here aren't necessarily needed in most in most situations and on most days, uh, actually the, these panels will only be activated. Uh, uh, during low solar conditions. So what I did is I put up a contactor here and this contactor will be connected to those solar panels and I'll have a, a signal a signal relay coming from the shed uh, measuring the solar intensity and when it gets down low enough it'll kick in this contactor here and feed those solar panels into my existing uh, uh, solar panel wiring wires. Now, uh, number 10 wire is good for 30 amps, and each one of my strings here doesn't put out much more than 10 amps in full sunshine. So in, in diminished solar conditions, uh, uh, with, with the already pan panels that are already there, plus the other ones that will be added to it, it'll still, still be well within range. And even if it was full sunshine uh, with both panels running into the same wiring, that's still only 20 amps, and I still got 10 amps headroom. So... There's really no problem with doing that, and it saves me a ton of money, and my wallet is happy. Now, as far as uh, uh, how much solar paneling will you need, well, let's say uh, in simple terms, because uh, math can get pretty complicated, uh, let's say your inverter runs 5,000 watts on average. Well, uh, to maintain a 5,000-watt load from, from solar panels, you've got to have 5,000 watts of solar panels. Well, then... Uh, then of course you've got uh, batteries that you got to keep charged too, 
And not all days are equal. You know, you're going to have some days where you might get a lot of sun or you might not get so much sun or hardly any sun. So you want to have uh, excess panels uh, to cover that. And I would say at the minimum, you probably want about 15,000 watts in panels. And on the, on the more worst days, uh, you might be able to get your battery bank charged up by the end of the day. But uh, being I like overkill here, I want my batteries charged up fast. So that, that way, if, uh, if we do have a crappy day, I don't have to worry about uh, uh, when nighttime comes, whether or not I have enough uh, power on my batteries or not to make it through the night. So typically with what I've got here on most days, uh, you know, I'll have my battery bank charged up usually by lunchtime. Now on a day like this, there is, uh, there is some sun, sun poking through. Uh, it, it's a little bit better than an overcast day, so uh, it may take uh, about mid-afternoon before they're all charged up. But I'll have a full bank of uh, fully fully charged bank of batteries tonight to uh, to use overnight. So, anyways, that kind of gives you an idea of uh, where I'm at here uh, as far as how many solar panels I got and what it's doing for me, and it just kind of like a, a compare that to what you're doing and. Uh, might give you a might give you a better idea uh, what it'll take in solar panels for you to have a system that you can rely on that uh, will produce most of the power you need. So, anyways, uh, for now, I think that's it for this video, and I'll see you again on the next one. Thanks for watching.